Hello, in the last video we learned a little bit about estimators and uh, transformers in Python, sklearn, and, uh, and how we can stitch those together into a pipeline. Today what I want to talk about is how we can um, uh, develop these ourselves. I mean that'll really help us understand what's going on with estimators. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, implement a classifier from uh, scratch called the nearest neighbor classifier. This is one they have built into um, sklearn. And, uh, and really it's kind of a simple um, classifier. It doesn't really learn any underlying characteristics. All it does is it memorizes the training data set. And then if it sees something in the test data set, it just searches through what it saw before. And it tries to see, hey, have I seen any sort of row that seems kind of similar to this one? If so, I'll just assume that we have the same pattern. So here I have um, a page that's describing um, how you can develop uh, your own estimators from scratch. And basically, there's different kinds of interfaces you might expect. Interface is the collection of methods you have to implement. And so an estimator, uh, at a minimum, has to have this fit method. So we're going to be uh, doing that when we build this. Um, the vast majority of the time, estimators are also predictors, right? The reason why we're trying to fit to some data is so we can make new predictions. The vast majority of uh, estimators are not only predictors, but also models, models that we can score. Uh, based on some sort of test data. So even though these are four separate or three separate things, we're going to be implementing all these today where we do a fit, a predict, and then a, a scoring. Um, and then in a later video where we talk about transforming, which I'm not going to do right now. Okay, so let me uh, go over and, and try to talk about this some more in terms of the data we're dealing with. So I have this little function here that uh, generates a data frame. And the data frame has an x1 column and an x2 column. And I'm randomly generating data from that, uh, from a normal distribution. And the scale of that is bigger along x2. So, so you can see that x1 goes from, I guess, negative 3 until 2. You can see all these points. And along the y-axis, uh, y -axis, or I guess x2, it's a little bit bigger. Um, I also have some sort of pattern here. Uh, large x1 values will be light blue, whereas others will be orange, right? So you can see how I have this uh, rule implemented here. And uh, and so really 0.5 is the threshold plus or minus some noise. And so I can plot those orange and light blue. And so I'm, I'm calling this function twice to get both a training data set and a test data set. And, and since they're generated by the same code, even though it has some randomness in it, I'm gonna get similar patterns. You can see these are, uh, you know, I have my training up on top and uh, and my test down below right and you can see how they're kind of similar but also different and uh, the way we should be thinking about this is the color for the second one is i'll just say it's black so it's unknown right now uh, i may pretend it's unknown what i'm going to try to do is i may see hey if i'm looking at this can i predict um, what color um, each of these points is based on my previous memorization of the test of the training data Right, so I'm trying to predict all of these. And the way I'm going to do that is if I see a point here, like let's say I see this point right here, um, my algorithm is going to look at the previous data and it's going to say, huh, that point seems kind of close to this one, so I guess that's going to be blue. Uh, if I have, uh, let's say, this one, I guess that's a little bit trickier. Maybe it's like, well, I guess that one's also blue. Maybe this is over here. Right, so it's going to try to look in the known data and see what we can find most similar uh, to what we're looking for. <laughs> and then, of course, when we're all done, if we make all these repredictions, we're going to try to turn this back on and see, well, how often do we get it right? So let me create my uh, my uh, uh, class down here. So this is all object-oriented. So I'm going to say class, and uh, maybe I'll call it nearest uh, neighbor, like that. And, um, and I guess I should have some sort of init method. Uh, always a good thing to do. Uh, for now, I'm not going to put anything in there. Uh, drawing back to that documentation, I saw the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have some sort of fit method. So I'm going to say I have a fit, and uh, fit has an x and a y, right? So this x is going to be those coordinates, right? The x is actually the x1 and x2. And then the y will be the color in this case. And, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to memorize these things, right? I'm going to say something like... Uh, uh, self dot x equals x and self dot y um, equals y right so that seems good um, let me before I go too far uh, just try this I'm gonna say neural or, or nearest neighbor equals nearest neighbor 
like so, and then I'm going to try to fit it to my data. Right, so I have to have my x and my y here, uh, which I can pull out of this data frame that I plotted earlier. Maybe, maybe let me just kind of um, have that here, right? So I'm going to say test.head. And so, so what I want to do is I want to pull out uh, those x columns. So I'm going to say data frame um, of x1 and x2. Remember that when you see those, then we'll have these um, y values, right? So let's try memorizing these during fitting. U usually there'd be some more complicated logic here that's trying to uh, you know, compute some coefficients, but this is kind of like a very simple model that's just memorizing everything. So, so I run that, and, uh, and why is it not happy? Because I guess, uh, I guess it's called test, right? So I say test like that, and, uh, and it memorized it. And so if I peek inside of here, I may say, you know, test, or I'm sorry, say neural net dot, why do I keep calling it neural net? Nearest neighbor dot um, x, I see I still have my data frame there. Now, one of the things about how these fit uh, uh, methods work in sklearn is that I should have an option. This could either be, um, it, it could be like a data frame like it is now, or it should also be able to be a, a NumPy array. And so I could try to check and convert it myself, but instead I'm going to use something that's built into um, sklearn. So here I'm going to say um, from sklearn.utilities.validation, I'm going to import this thing called check x, y. And what this is going to do is it's automatically going to convert these two things to uh, for me to NumPy array. So it doesn't matter if I'm taking a data frame or something else, it's going to normalize it. So I'm going to do that. I pass in my x and my y, and uh, it's going to return two values. So I can actually do something like this. I can say like this, and then grab this as well. So I'm going to run that. And let's take a peek at this. Uh, why is it not defined? Because I didn't actually run this. Great, and so I have that there. Uh, you can see that it's converting everything to these NumPy arrays for me. Um, so that's good. Uh, why, why is it called uh, check x, y? Well, it's doing other things besides converting it for me. It's also uh, making sure that they're the same size. So if I did something like this, it's automatically gonna give me an error. So I say, well, uh, you know, I had 100, rows of x's and only 10 y values, right? So that's going to be nice. It's going to make that easier for me. In general, when you're learning a new framework like sklearn, there's going to be a lot of, um, sorry, a lot of helper methods or functions like this that are going to help you implement new classes uh, quickly and easily. Great, so I have all that, and, uh, and this is good now. And, um, and, and what I want you to teach you as well is when you're uh, developing new things, you want to do what's called test-driven development. How can you have some tests that you run as you go to make sure you're uh, kind of doing all the things that you need to do. And, uh, and for you, most of the tests you've been dealing with have been things we've given you, like for a project. Um, it actually turns out that if I look here, uh, they have some uh, check estimator. They have this very nice uh, uh, function here that's gonna run a bunch of tests on our estimator for us. And so this will be a great thing for me to um, to import and use, so I can actually make sure that I'm building a proper um, estimator from the perspective of sklearn. So I'm going to say from sklearn, I'm going to import this thing. And uh, what I can do with this thing is I can pass in, I can pass in, here, let me just kind of leave this here for now. I can pass in my type that I'm implementing. And what they'll do is they'll use that type to implement or to create uh, different nearest neighbor objects and to run a bunch of tests on them. They'll try to fit them on different data. And right now I'm not nearly done, so um, I'm going to get a whole bunch of errors that I may have to work on. Okay, and so right away it's complaining, hey, if you want to be a proper estimator, you have to have this get parameters method. Okay. So let me peek over here and get at the documentation, right? Uh, I, I'm kind of going through this all quickly because I've read the documentation carefully before, but if you were coming at some sort of new framework, you would probably read this document very carefully before doing this. And so if I look at JIT params, uh, yeah, yeah, all that, they say the easiest way to implement these methods and also as a bonus kit, uh, a sensible REPR method is to inherit from this base estimator class. And so this actually takes us back to object-oriented programming, right? 
Um, there are some of these methods that I need to have in my estimator, and, uh, and rather than implement them myself, I could just um, import them, or not imp inherit them if I would like to. So I'm going to grab this as well. I'm going to inherit from this over here. And so, so let's have this right here from uh, sklearn.base, import base estimator. So all the things in this space are different things that you, we can inherit from if we wanted to. So I'm going to do that. And, uh, and so I'm getting other, well, let me just see what's going on here. Okay, so I'm getting other errors now, right? So I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But I got past that one error, so that's good, right? So this helped me with something. And, and let me just be very clear what's happening here. If I, if I head down here and I actually create one of these, let me let me do this. I'm going to say dir of nn, my nearest neighbor, and I see that there's the methods I implemented, like fit, and then there's these also these other ones that it's giving me for free, right? I, I could also, if I wanted to, say something like this. I could say nearest neighbor dot, which is the type method resolution order, and I can see that uh, I'm inheriting from this thing right here, which is great. Okay, so what is this next error? Uh, you can see what the assertion failed right inside of their uh, inside of their tests. It, it's expecting this thing uh, to be an estimator, and and so without going back to the documentation, I'm just going to explain what that's about. Uh, what it's expecting you to do with the fit method is to actually return it yourself, and um, this is just kind of a common pattern, right? When you have a, a methods that don't really need to return anything, they'll often return themselves. And the reason is that if you do that, then you could do things like this. I could say something like nn.fit, and um, I want to have whatever there. And let's say I have some other method uh, down here that I want to call, so some other method. Uh, if this isn't really returning anything anyway, I can change it so it returns itself. And then what I could do is I could say this, and then on the same line, I could call some other method. All right, so this is just a common pattern you're going to see. Uh, with methods, right? If they aren't returning somebody else, you'll return yourself. So I could just chain them together. And this is just a slightly shorter version of this, right? So if I return myself here, uh, hopefully I stop getting this assertion error, right? It wants the uh, dot fit to return an estimator. And really, that estimator is itself. So I'm going to run that. Great. So I'm doing good. So now I have a different error message. I would say the estimator wants me to have um, uh, uh, public uh, attributes during the fit method. And, oh, I'm not allowed to add add them during the fit method and say I'm doing that now. What it would really like me to do is what it's calling private attributes. And, uh, and what that means is it wants an underscore before or after the name. And so I, I think this requires a little bit of explanation. If, uh, if you're coming from a background where you say you know a language like uh, Java, there are different kinds of attributes, right? Right here I have these X attributes and my Y attributes. And um, in Python, I can uh, you know access them down here, right? I mean, I could say like you know self dot x, or if I have some object down here, I could say dot x down here. Um, in some programming languages, they'll have you specify in some way for each attribute, which is private or public. And, and private means that this is okay, but I can't really access it um, outside. And, and so this is not a feature we have in Python. There's no real distinction between uh, things that are kind of public and private. But we still want to have this as kind of a pattern. We want to tell people sometimes that, you know, you shouldn't be mucking around down here, right? I shouldn't do that because this is really kind of only for these methods to use themselves, right? It's, it's kind of private. And, and there's no way to actually enforce that with Python. But what we'll do is we'll uh, try to put an underscore either before or after. That's kind of a signal that uh, this is intended to be private. So, so I run that, and you can actually see, well, all my tests are passing now. Um, so this is great. Now, the other thing I want to do uh, is, as I was mentioning up here, a lot of the, where, where do I go? A lot of the estimators we have, we would also like them to be predictors and, uh, and models. And, uh, and so I can add a predict method. Let me do that. I say define predict. I have an x value there, and, uh, and then I may have to, to do some stuff down here. I may leave that for now. And, uh, and then I could also, if I want to be a model, I could add a score method. Uh, now, it turns out there's an easier way to do that. Um, I could actually 
Uh, there's another thing that under base is called a classifier uh, mixed. And if I inherit from that, that's automatically going to give me a, a scoring method, right? So it's going to give me something like this, where I have X and Y. And what that would let me do, it would let me pass in a test data set and try to see how well I'm performing on that. Uh, but I get that for free, so I only have to implement this uh, predict method. Now, as soon as I did this, I added a predict method and, and this classifier mix in. This test realized, is I'm trying to do more than just build a regular estimator, I'm trying to also do uh, a model, uh, this modeling and prediction. And so now it's going to be very uh, trying to picky again. Actually, that wasn't that. Uh, it's going to be very picky again about well what these actually do, right? So it's actually running more tests now. And what does it say here? So predict takes one positional argument, two or given. Oh, uh, my apologies. I need to say self here. Okay, now what are we dealing with? So uh, it expected an array-like uh, object, but it, it, it got none. Okay, so, so can I kind of go up and see what's happening? So, so if I wanted to, I could, you can actually see I have these files, right? These estimator checks. That's a regular file on my computer. Uh, if I wanted to, I could go and dig in through that and try to figure out what's going on. Um, and uh, actually, let me just see here. Compute accuracy. You know what I think is wrong is actually trying to do this scoring based on my on my predictions. And I'm not really returning anything. That's why I'd say it has none, right? So I should actually return something here. And so, so maybe I'll just do something very naive first. So I memorized all these Y values from before. And so I'm just going to return uh, the first one I saw. So self.y, just like that. It, it actually, I need to have it be the same shape as whatever my x is. So I'm going to do something like this. Uh, if I have a bunch of x values put in, then I should have a bunch of y values. So, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to say y equals uh, this list. And then we say for row in x. Eventually, I want to base on uh, try to base on this row, figure out what my y should be. But for now, I'm just going to say y dot append. You know, whatever I saw before y. And I don't know zero. That'll always be my prediction. Just something very naive, so I can uh, try to show I'm doing some predictions. Eventually, I have some better logic here. And at the end, I'm going to return a numpy array uh, based on that. Uh, well, while I'm at it, I just want to kind of make clear that I'm memorizing what this is. So maybe I have a different uh, name for both of these. Uh, these are the things I'm memorizing from before. And then this is my new data, right? So this is my, I think I covered that all there. Um, let, let me give this a, a check. Okay, it doesn't check for uh, kind of these va bad values in, uh, in the prediction. So... One of the things I could do is it's running a bunch of tests and it's hard for me to see what's going on. So I could add some prints here, right? So I could say, hey, I'm editing. And you can see it ran a whole bunch of tests before I failed, right? And so maybe what I'd like to do next, I'd like to figure out which of these methods is failing, right? Since it didn't really tell me much in that, in that, in that error message. So I'm gonna print both of these like so. And I see it, it failed on the predict. And, and so for the predict here, uh, let me just actually print off what x is. So I print off my x, and it's trying to print off a whole bunch of things. But what I could do is I could scroll down and see, like, right before it crashed, what was I dealing with, right? So, so I see there's this problem here, right? I had a not a number, um, inside of my x x values. And now when I look at that, the error message that it's actually giving me kind of makes more sense, right? It's not checking for nat or inf infinite. And so I could do that myself, but again, there's maybe an easier way instead of having this check X and check Y. Uh, there's also just a check array uh, that I could use. And, uh, and I'll, I'll do that down here. I may say X equals check array X. And this thing is going to throw an exception if I, if I kind of have a bad value. And, uh, and that's going to be good because then I don't have to check it myself and throw an exception. Right, so, so maybe I'm just going to put this back for now like so, and see how far we get. There's lots of things that get this uh, working right. Check array is not defined. Uh, I always forget to rerun this. Great. Okay, so I'm making progress, right? And this is that's why it's so important to kind of make sure you're looking at uh, you're looking at the error messages as you go, right? Because otherwise, it can feel like you're stuck. Whereas really, I've solved like five problems now. I haven't solved all my problems, but I have solved a bunch of them.
okay, now I have this problem that the arrays are not necessarily the same, the same size. Okay, so how, how am I ending up with that? Uh, what I want it to do is I want it to complain if they're different sizes. And, uh, and where can I do that? So I think that, uh, did it tell me what method it was in? Let me see here. My predictions are not the same size. Let, let me just do what I was doing before. Can I figure out which one of these it's it's kind of crashing on? So I'm gonna here. I'm gonna say, um, predict, and I think that's where it's crashing, right? So let me just see how far we get. If I look right before it crashed. Yep, it was a predict. So, so maybe let me just look at what uh, what my x is, right? So I'm going to say print that x value right after I did a check array on it, and uh, there's my array. And so why doesn't it like that? Me. Oh, uh, sorry, that was the first one. Let me look at the last one that it doesn't like. I was trying to do a prediction with this, and then it complained that the array sizes were not equal. So, so I think that what it's complaining is that, well, maybe I had different sizes this time than last time. What, but is this, it kind of, kind of is strange that it's saying that I have both a Y problem, X problem and Y problem. Um, so, so let me, let me check this. I want to check that uh, both these things are the same size, right? So. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually print uh, x dot shape, and then that better match up with what I memorized earlier, right? Otherwise, I'm just making completely different data. So I'm going to say self dot mem x dot shape. So so let me take a look here. What I got right before it crashed. Sorry, I had to pause the video there a little bit to figure out what, what is going on. Um, it was not a, something that had come up when I was doing the prepping, uh, maybe because I was implementing features in a different order. Okay, so I've been digging through this and I can see that this is what uh, is failing us. And really, we have a different number of unique items in uh, what is actually there and what is predicted. And, and so what it's complaining about is that I only ever predict um, one thing and really, like, it would be liking me to make at least one prediction of each of them. And that should kind of match both the, the input and output. And so what I'm going to do here is not, not do this, but I'm actually going to append a different value based on what row we're in. It's still just kind of garbage for now. Um, eventually, we're actually going to do something meaningful. Uh, but I'm just going to do that. I'm going to say I. And then just to make sure um, I don't go beyond the ends of this, I'm just going to mod that by however long it is, right? So if I have five items and I is, you know, six, when I mod it by the length of that, then it will just wrap around to one. So I'm gonna do that. And great, so I got past that error and I got to this other one, which is that the nearest neighbor object has no classes. Great, so I know what that one is. So I'm back in familiar, familiar territory. What it wants me to do is up here, what I, uh, do by fitting, I want to, it wants me to set the, the basically the list of all the classes I might encounter. Right, so I'm going to say self.classes equals, and uh, if I wanted to, I could say something like this. I wanted to say like the set of y, maybe convert that to a list. Um, now, when I was doing this earlier, I discovered that there's a very helpful method that uh, comes with sklearn to help us with this, and, uh, and that is, it's called unique labels. And what it's trying to do is, at the same time that it's trying to do this, it's trying to do some additional checking, just like here. It's trying to make for sure, for example, that these are actually categories. It's not like just a bunch of, uh, you know, floating point numbers or something like that. And so I'm going to do that kind of the uh, sklearn way. So I'm going to say uh, sklearn.utils.multiclass import unique labels. And this is really like computing the set for me and also doing some other checking. 
um, at the same time. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to run that. And uh, I actually have to rerun this, don't I? And why, why is it complaining that I still don't have classes? Oh, because I didn't make it plural. Great. And so let me, let me see down here. What am I hitting now? It does not raise an error when the number of features in predict is different than the number of features in fit. Okay, so I, I should make sure that they're matching. Um, let me see if there's any shortcut in my notes on how to do that. Um, one of the things we can do, which I don't think is very fixed this, but we have to do it eventually anyway, I have to make sure that this fit is called before I do my predicting. So I do that, I say check is fitted on myself, right? This just verifies that I actually ran this before which is not my problem here. Oh, and uh, where is check is fitted? That's another one of these things I have to import. So I'm gonna say, uh, that's also here. So check is fitted. Great, okay, so back to where I was. Different number of features in predict. Um, so let me, let me be careful about how to do that. So I need to do this, so I, so I have my array. I should make sure that they're the same um, uh, size, right? So I should say something like if, I don't remember doing this before, so I'm wondering if I had some sort of shortcut. Um, nope, so I'm gonna say if x dot shape of one is not equal to self dot mem x, dot shape of one, right? Because the features are along the columns. That may raise a, an error, right? So they're they're hoping I get a value error, right? Right, because the when the feet number of features in predict is different than the number of features in fit, well, that's my problem, right? So I'm going to uh, head up here, and, uh, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to raise a value error I may say uh, trade slash test feature mismatch, something like that. Great. So where am I now? I'm getting closer. So not equal in tolerance, um, but applied to a subset. I see. So what they're saying now is that when they change uh, the value that uh, that they're basically testing me on, right? So they're, they're saying that, hey, they put in a full table, right? And I got a bunch of predictions. And then they're giving me a subset of those and I'm making different predictions. And that's because I, I'm just kind of doing this silly thing here, right? Where I should actually be doing a real prediction. So, so I think now is actually a time to do a real prediction, right? So that it, it, I kind of don't have these wonky things where it's just like goofy garbage. And so, so what I want to do, right, I'm looping over all of these rows in my test data. And what I want to do is I want to also loop through all the rows in my trading data and see what is most similar. So I'm going to change this up a bit. So I'm going to try to just leave this here for now. I may call this row one. And then I may have a row two. I may say something like for j row two and enumerate self dot uh, what I call it before, what the, the values I memorized, right? I loop over those. I want to see how similar this is to these right here. So how could I do that? Uh, well, maybe let me just print both of them first. So I'm going to print row one and row two. And uh, I'm going to stop with the testing for a moment and, and just try to manually do a test case so I can see what's going on. So let's do this. Um, I want to fit my test data. So I'm going to say test, and then what columns did I had? I had x1 and x2. And I wanted to fit that against my y column. And then I want to try to do a predict based on my trading data. And for that, I don't need any y because it's supposed to return the y for me. And, and so what I can see is that it's pretty off all these pairs, right? I try to figure out how uh, how close, you know, this was in my 
Um, this was in my uh, test data. This was in my training data. How close are these, right? Should I use the Y value for this as my prediction for this? It really depends on how close they are. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the kind of geometric Euclidean distance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this by this and square it. And I would subtract this by this and square it. And I'm going to take the square root of all that. And so the way I could do that is actually element-wise, I could do, do row one minus row two. Maybe I'm just gonna print that out as we go, right? So now I have an X dis difference and a Y difference, and I can square both of those. Okay, so that's good, I'm squaring both of those. And then I can add those things together. Right? And then if I take the square root of this, then that's an actual distance between those two. Right, So here are a bunch of distances between points. And really, it's comparing everything in my new um, test data against everything that I saw earlier in my, in my training data. And, and so my goal is to try to figure out, well, what in my training data was most similar to this row I'm looking at right now? What row two is most similar to my row one? Okay, so I'm going to put this in a variable. I say that's my distance. And, uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have something like up here. I'm going to say like my best distance. Maybe I'll start off at none. I can also start off like at a very large number. And then um, what I'll do down here is I'll say if my distance, well, if it's the first one I've seen or I've found something closer than my new best distance is going to equal dest. And, uh, and at the same time, I also discovered uh, I, I discovered what row I want, right? I, I want this row two is the best. And so that's good, except I don't really care about row two itself because those are my X values. I want the Y value corresponding to the, that, uh, which I can find out because, well, I'm keeping track of what index I'm at. So I'm going to say my best, best Y equals self dot, Memorize y at what index? Index j. Does, does that try to make sense? So, so basically what I'm doing is I'm looking for the row of what I've seen before that's most similar to what I'm trying to predict. And, and when I find the row 2 that's most similar to this row 1, I'm saying, well, what y did I have here? That's my prediction. Right? So, so now I actually know what I want down here. I want to have my best y. Great. So I'm going to do this. And, uh, and I can do my predictions now. Okay. Before I actually do the fun of plotting that, let me go back and, and finish all my uh, kind of testing, right? Uh, kind of making uh, SK learn happy. And thank you. Thank goodness that it's finally, uh, finally working now. I kind of uh, have uh, done everything to satisfy the SK learn test, right? That's the hard part. And I can delete all of this now. I have a, have a nice tester. And uh, I'm still printing things right here, right? And so now I can actually do the fun stuff, right? I've done all my testing. Now I can actually use it for things. So I'm going to head down here. And uh, let's see how well I do. So I make all of these predictions here. Maybe actually before I even do the predictions. Um, well, okay, we're going to do this. So... So I could do this in my, um, in my training data or my test data, I could say my uh, prediction equals this. And then let me look at this here. If I wanted to, I could try to see how often these two things are, are kind of the same, right? So I could say something like test y equals test predict y. That's telling me when I get it wrong. So I guess I got it wrong here, right? Got it right the first time. That, that's just a series of Boolean. So I can count them up. I can say like value counts. And this will tell me, okay, well, I'm predicting correctly 55% of the time. And I'm predicting wrong 45% uh, of the time. It's not great. Uh, now, this is a way to manually do it. One of the nice things that I could do is I can, if I want to, Let me let me kind of clean all of this up. This was the the one way, right? So maybe 
Everybody do it like this. L let me show you how I could do something a little bit more simple. Instead of adding a special column from that, or even calling the, the predict, I could just say, well, I learned on these x's and y's in my test data, and how well do I do if I want to evaluate that on my training data? Right, so I'm going to show you some new, new ones that I can just call the score method. That's going to tell me, okay, well, I'm right 71% of the time. Okay, which I think is uh, strange because it's a little bit different than what I got up here, isn't it? Uh, you know, I got this backwards. I want to trade on my... I'm sorry, even this is kind of goofed up too, right? I'm trading on my trading data, and then I'm testing on my test data. Why did I get that all backwards? Same thing down here. So I'm trading on my trading data, then I'm testing on my testing data. Apologize for that. Okay, great. That Now it's all kind of matching up. Sanity checked it. All right, so this is what I'll typically do, right? Uh, if I have some sort of new model, I'll, I'll do a fit on the trading data, and then I'll score it like this. So where is this scoring method com coming from? Well, I certainly didn't write it, but the great thing is I inherited from this classifier mixin, and that gave me the scoring uh, automatically for me. Uh, great. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about how we can try to get these uh, uh, kind of better performance out of this. Actually, one last thing I want to do is I just want to uh, visualize these predictions we're making, right? So here, right, I could actually head all the way back here, and, uh, and I could do this plotting that we did way, way back at the beginning, right? I could see on my test data, well, what does that look like? And if I wanted to alongside that, I could say, well, that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> what did I actually do? And I could do that. And I could compare it. I could try to see some of the, the mistakes it's making. For example, uh, I, I could see that I'm calling these orange when really they should be blue up here. Right? So I could try to debug it in that way.